All right, guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. I'm thinking that it's time to upgrade my batteries. So if you guys saw that last video, showed you guys I was topping off the batteries and maintaining the batteries. Yeah, and as we've put more and more load on those batteries, I've had to do more and more to maintain them every month. So I'm starting to see some issues. Let's check it out. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Okay guys, if you guys have followed the channel for a while, you guys know we're off grid. And uh, last, uh, a year and a half ago when we first moved up here, I upgraded and put all of these solar panels up. And I put up four, uh, 12 solar panels. Each one of those are brand new, 330 watt solar panels. All together, I have just under 4,000 watts of generating power. So, with that said, let me show you the system that we have. All right, you guys saw the video where we put this door in. I'll tell you what, it sure is nice walking down the stairs. I have a 4,000 watt trace inverter. Yeah, it's pretty old, but it works great. Dependable as the sun rising and setting. And then, of course, I have my step down for my generator. Step down from 220 to 120 because everything that I have is 120. Now, I do have two... 60 amp chargers six panels on each for a total of 60 amps max charge charge controller and uh, it's charging all of these batteries there we go here's my power center these are eight t105s trojans each one is of 225 amp hours and uh, six volts so i have four wired in a series for 24 volt system and then i have two banks of 24 volts so i have a total of 450 amp hours of storage capacity here so if you guys saw that last video where i was maintaining the batteries what we've discovered is that because we added a freezer high energy energy guide freezer stand-up freezer 282 kilowatt hours per uh, yearly electricity usage which is really low thing doesn't turn on very much but between our refrigerator freezer upstairs that freezer this inverter which is 30 watts continuously on and then my starlink which is i really don't know how many watts that the starlink is burning all the time to keep that thing on well i'm just going to throw 30 watts out there if i'm wrong guess leave me a comment correct me but i'm i'm constantly drawing well the refrigerator refrigerators don't go on all the time so i have a constant 60 watts maybe 100 watts of power continuously being drawn 24 7. And then the refrigerator's running because it's warm in the summertime, so the refrigerators are running. Daytime's not an issue because of the solar panels, right? I can weld, run the dryer, run the vacuum cleaner and everything, and it doesn't even touch the batteries. But at nighttime, I've been dipping 15, 16% overnight. So on these batteries, if I don't go to bed with them 100% full, say I go to bed with them 91% or 90%, I am get down into, you know, the high 70s, mid 70s. And then when you don't equalize, flooded cell batteries, these are flooded cell, lead acid. There are lead plates in, a lead, uh, in an acid bath. Uh, if you don't equalize them, the sulfates start to build up on the plates and the sulfates will touch the, the sulfate next to it and it will start to short that battery out a little bit. So the capacity is diminished. So you might have a 225 amp hour battery but uh, you might be diminishing that down to say 180 amp hours because you don't have the capacity. Does that make sense? I think I got that right. So what's been happening is that when you, when you equalize, you're basically, you're kind of cooking those lead plates and you're baking off that, or you're boiling off that sulfate and those are dropping to the bottom of the battery. So a deep cycle battery is taller and so you have a reservoir down here where all that extra sulfate's at, lead, lead sulfate, I guess. And it starts to build up over time. And every time you ox every time you equalize, you're sloughing off or you're baking off more of that sulfate and it's starting to accumulate. So when these batteries are, are dead, it's when that sulfate touches the bottom of those plates or the lead plates start to warp and, and, and twist. And if, and if they twist and warp enough where they touch each other, You've shorted out that cell. So there's a lifespan of these batteries. These batteries were, oh, there's no date on these. 
uh, it's probably a date somewhere if I looked hard enough. But uh, the, when we bought the house, the 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 people we bought it from had had put these new batteries in a year or two before we bought the house, and we've had it for five years. So these batteries are in the seven year old range. I think it's time to change batteries. I don't want to go into the winter time having issues with the batteries because in winter time we have even less sun exposure to the to the to the um, to the solar panels, and so it takes longer to charge up the batteries. As well as I'm running the generator, we have a lot more darkness, not as much sunlight hours total. So uh, I'm going to have to run the generator quite a bit. And last winter, uh, I had to run quite a bit of propane to run the generator to charge these batteries up, and uh, we didn't make it through a whole year with uh, we have a five we had a 500 gallon tank um let me show you come check this out guys here's my propane tank that's a 500 gallon propane tank and believe it or not you can only fill an above ground propane tank to 85 percent and then when you get down to about 20 percent they want you, they want to come and refill it so we used 65 percent of this and in January, February, I had to come and refill this thing. That's because we were using so much propane. Well, I'm going to leave this right here for you guys. You guys tell me what you think this is. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make a guess. One nice thing about the, the, the local propane company that we use is that they will purchase. I purchased this tank. They will give me what I paid for it, even though it's been a number of years. It's an above ground tank. They'll give me what I paid for it as trade-in value towards uh, this other tank. I'm gonna do a thousand gallon variable tank. Stay tuned for that video. That'll be coming up here in a couple of weeks. So, got the higher uh, capacity propane tank and because it's variable, you can they can fill them to 90% instead of 85%. But let's go check out the batteries. Marley, what are you doing? All right, guys. So, um, the, the old Truckee here, done really, really well. You know, she's sitting pretty low. But she's not bottomed out. <laughs> you guys are going to wonder what the heck. There we go, guys. Look at those bad boys. What do we have here? We have a 190 amp hour, 12 volt AGM batteries. So we got a smoking deal from a guy uh, who works on cell sites and uh, every every couple of years they have to uh, re replace the standby batteries uh, storage capacity for all these cell sites that are uh, remote or whatnot. They have to have these backup batteries for when the power goes out. So these are basically cell tower uh, backup batteries for uh, backup power systems. And they see hardly any use because the power rarely goes out. When it goes out, the batteries fire up, runs the cell tower, keeps it running, then the power comes back on, and then whatever the batteries have been used, they are immediately recharged to full capacity. So these batteries see hardly any use, but they have to keep changing them out every number of years. Um, every three to four years, I think is what it is. They go in and they change these batteries out. To make sure they have, uh, they don't have any, uh, they don't have any issues. So, you, if you guys are resourceful and you find somebody that uh, has access to these things, you can get a pretty good deal on them. I got a, a smoking deal on these things, and um, so I'm going to go for it. So what I did is I got 12. These are 12 volts. I got 12 of these, and I have a 24 volt system. So I'm effectively going to have six um, 24 volt. 190 amp hour uh, batteries. Okay, here we go. It is time to disconnect the power. Whew. To say I'm a little nervous is an understatement. Um, yes, I'm a novice at this, but I've watched enough of you all on YouTube to know, think I know how to do this. So here we go. <laughs> All right, my solar panels are now off. Nice having a breaker for each panel. So I won't get zapped as I'm doing this. Okay. Gonna give me a minute to recover. Those things are freaking heavy. 
132 pounds each. I did 10, I couldn't do any. I had to have Olivia come help me bring the last two. So these are gonna line up perfectly right through here. I got plenty of room for them. And uh, let's talk about the advantages really quick about AGM batteries versus flooded lead acid batteries. You have to equalize these. You have to maintain the, the electrolyte level and no more distilled water. Yep. The last time I put a whole gallon of water in these things because they were, they were pretty low. So you don't have to worry about equalizing these. You don't have to worry about electrolyte levels. They are sealed and they don't gas unless you cook them too much. Then they'll give off a little bit of hydrogen gas. But, but uh, yeah, there's a big advantage with the AGM batteries. They're just extremely expensive. These batteries probably run $700 to $1,000 a piece. And uh, I didn't pay nearly that because they were a couple years old and used. But anyway, all right. So now I'm going to be taking off all of these uh, little connectors. I'm going to be reusing these jumpers and then wire it straight up so you guys tell me i'm going to be wiring connecting two of these together to make because each one's 12 I'm, i have a 24 volt system and i'm going to be uh, connecting two of them in series and then the rest of them will be in parallel so where should i tap in for the system in the middle of the parallel system or at one end you guys leave me a comment in the bottom i may have to try both and see how it works so the, an advantage with the AGM batteries as well is that they last a lot longer. You can, you can actually discharge them quite a bit lower than you can a regular lead acid battery. We try not to go below 70% with the lead acid batteries, but the AGMs, I mean, you can, I, I'm, I'm, what, I've, what I've read is you can go down as, as low as 50% on the AGM batteries, but I will, I will always keep it at 70%. So um, not having to maintain them, not having to, uh, they also uh, withstand the cold better than uh, the lead acid batteries, but uh, this is in the basement, as you can see, and it never really gets below 45 down here in the coldest, coldest nights. And uh, when we go to insulate this place even better, it'll be even warmer. So um, you guys leave me a comment in the bottom. Um, was it worth it buying these used batteries for a smoking deal? I'll just tell you I paid under 2000 for all 12 of these batteries. So you guys let me know if that was worth it for a, a good used AGM battery. Versus uh, those of you that are paying $1,000 a piece or more for the great big 200 amp hour lithium uh, lithium batteries. I don't have that kind of cash. I have a friend of mine that uh, just installed six of those things. Six thousand dollars worth of lithium batteries. I didn't have the money so this was an opportunity to upgrade my system. This should get me by for another, I don't know, seven to ten years I've been hoping. So all right let's wire these bad boys up. All right guys I am going to be making a couple of battery cables. And I'm going to be using these battery terminals. I'm going to solder these suckers on. And these are meant for 4 aught wire or 1 aught. 1 aught down to 4 aught. The 4 aught will fit. Um, they're a little larger, but they're going to have the right size hole for my for my batteries. You guys leave me a comment. Tell me. 600 volt 4 aught with about, uh, I think that's about a 12 strand copper wire. Or this monster cable which is also 4 aught, and uh, should be good for 600 volts as well. But uh, you guys tell me which one's going to be better for connecting my batteries. This stuff or this stuff? I'm going to use this stuff. You guys leave me a comment. Tell me if you think I should switch it out to this stuff and put, uh, put these battery terminals on the end. Battery corrosion guard, guys. I cranked those suckers down. I cleaned off the terminals to bare copper. Crank that sucker down. I'm gonna coat it with this. All right, guys, so I have decided to just crimp these on. Twist those good, shove that sucker all the way in there. And then I'm using my bolt cutters to crimp them because I can't get anything bigger. I don't have heavy duty crimpers. So I just gotta make sure I don't do it too much where I cut the, cut it. So there we go, guys. So there, guys, that's what it's gonna look like when it's done is uh, two nice ends right there with the shrink tubing on them. I've got everything I need here. I've got my bus bars, got my battery cables, drill, cleaner, cleaning solution, all that good stuff. All 
All right, guys, I think I got these wired up right. Every two is wired together to make a 24 volt pack and everything in and that's series. And then in parallel, I've got the reds, all the reds connected with my power wire to the inverter, as well as the positive side from my solar panels. And I have the negative side to the inverter and the negatives of, uh, of, the, of the solar panels are working over there. So I got some little crackling and popping going on. I got to tighten all these things down and uh, then I think I'm good to go. And then I can flip it all on. All right, guys, I got them all connected now. So my positive wires from my charge controllers were a little bit too short, so I didn't go to the center. You guys leave me a comment, let me know. Would it have been better Better to tap this whole bank in the center or from one end? I may change this based on what you guys are telling me. I have a friend telling me that it's probably better to tap it in the middle. That way you're not pulling voltage all the way through all these wires. A little bit less resistance if I go in the middle. Tell me what you guys think, guys. All right, let's go upstairs and see what the uh, battery uh, monitor looks like. Uh, I know that, that uh, the frame rate on this GoPro is a little... Uh, a little faster than the frame rate on this digital, but it's showing 25.1 volts, 24 volt system. That's how much volt is in those batteries right now. Let's see how many amps. Well, it's saying negative 0.1 amps. That's because this is on and it says the batteries are 100% full. Holy crap. Let's go downstairs and turn on the inverter. Oh, I am excited to think that these batteries the guy I got these from said that uh, he had charged these up and tested them and that they were all 100% good. So let's turn on the inverter. It's got power. So I'm going to, there we go. No way. We have light. <laughs> wow. Oh man, I am so happy. Look at that, guys. All right, guys, there you go. I upgraded the batteries to AGM batteries. I will do an update in another, oh, I'll give it a month or so, give you guys an update and let you guys know just how awesome these batteries are doing and uh, any signs of trouble or whatnot. But as of right now, I have almost 1200 amp hours of storage AGM batteries that should last me at least 10 years. So it was a s awesome deal, smoking upgrade, and uh, and I wired it right. So if, if, if you guys see that I did something that you don't like, that I shouldn't have done, you guys leave me a comment in the, in the comment section and let me know. Or if you are feel compelled so, you certainly can email me and let me know, hey, you screwed that up, change that. But uh, I may still change the wiring and the tap and lengthen the power wires from my charge controller down to uh, the middle of this battery bank and uh, depend on what you guys say. So guys, thank you for watching at, here in Hidden Valley Homestead. We are upgrading all the time and uh, trying to improve on life. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching.